Time being 7.03, I'll call the Monday, July 26, 2021 meeting of the Oxford Planning Board to order. First on the agenda, plans not requiring subdivision approval. We have none. I'll skip down to action items. Entertain a motion to approve the minutes of June 14th, 2021. I'll make that a motion. Okay, Roger made the motion. Is there a second? I'll second it. Second by uh, Norman. Any discussion? Any issues with it? There being none, all those voting in favor? Aye. 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 Carried unit by all members here present. Okay, entertain a motion to approve the minutes of uh, June 28th, 2021. I'll make the motion. Roger Second made the motion and Norman Second seconded. It. Further discussion? There being none. All those voting in favor? Aye. Aye. I'll abstain because I wasn't there. That's good. Okay. It's been carried. Time being 7.05, we have a continued public hearing for Pioneer Drive. Application for special permit and site plan review and approval. Applicant, BVO LLC. Owner, Sunny Hill Realty LLC. For a marijuana cultivation facility. Uh, let's see. And uh, Mr. Chairman, if I may, yeah, um, just just by uh, for update, introduction, so on. The um, earlier this afternoon, the applicant submitted some additional information as requested um, at the last meeting. Um, the applicant has also met with with fire, and um, and also um, at the last meeting there was a, a butter that. As for some clarity with respect to odor control, um, should the board wish to approve, uh, would recommend that we just modify a condition that was placed in the host community agreement uh, with respect to the reporting of complaints relative to odor um, and modify it so that we would include businesses as well. Um, so that should help sort of satisfy the, the concern. Of because in the HCA, just to be clear, it um, there's a notation in there that um, five or more complaints from households, and um, certainly there's there's businesses there as well. So so that would um, I would just ask that we essentially modify that condition, if you will, in in the board's approval. Um, would also note too, Mr. Chairman. So this is application for a special permit site plan. Um, being four members present tonight, I believe this special permit would require five. Yeah. So, so we really can't act on it anyway. Uh, um, certainly, um, if I may, Mr. Chairman, you know, perhaps we can take new information. That's about it. Mm -hmm. so. Or if, if perhaps if um, if the vice chair were to come in a few minutes later or so, if I don't know if um, yeah, how I'm you'd not see fit. Sure where he's at. I know Christine and. And Dale has have been having some physical problems, so so the only one that Jeff, if he could, come, if he's going to come in, but Jeff's usually here half an hour ahead of time, so it's looking to me like he isn't coming in. That's could postpone it or just put it on hold till the end of the meeting in case he shows up. Okay, we can do that. Maybe just a suggestion. All right, let's, uh, I'll entertain a motion to uh, continue this public hearing to 7.30. <laughs> okay, if he isn't here by then, he is not coming, okay. Is that okay? Go ahead. Yep. I'll, I'll make that motion that we continue to set 7.30. Second. Seconded by Roger. Further discussion, all those voting in favor? Aye. Aye. 
carried unanimously. Okay, we got two new submissions. First one is uh, 498 Main Street. Dated uh, 627 2021. Uh, the name of the, the, the uh, applicant basically is uh, Gary Jackson Motors of Charlton. Uh, the, uh, the applicant, the Gary in a morality from uh, Worcester owns the property. Uh, Oh no, he's the owner of uh, Gary Jackson Motors. Uh, Charles Bagundis from Worcester owns the property. Okay, the property is uh, the old Maxis Motor across from the police station. Uh, and they basically want to increase their used car business from what 24 is that 24 now uh, according to the notes it's 35 and the applicant's proposing 47 yeah he's going up to 47 anyway and everyone's got a picture in front of him a colored picture showing the extent of the land clearing they've done on uh, two sides of that And uh, abutting this property is uh, conservation land. And we're showing on his uh, proposal that they're basically showing all these new spots on dirt. Okay, so we got some, I think we got issues with the, uh, the parking. Also, I'd, I'd really want to make sure that we get something from Conservation Commission. That yeah. Is this weapons. what you call on the colored? Okay. There's a colored one in, your, in uh, the New stuff. back. There it is, right there. Oh, yeah. That's the, uh, that's a drone shot. <clears throat> it's a, a recent drone shot. They've been really clearing around the periphery of that property. Getting that close, the, getting closer to the uh, conservation. Is that the extent of our site plan submittals now? Drone shots? <laughs> no, that was the town request to see what was oh. going on. Oh. I guess when it went up to thirty-five cars, okay. They put some pavement down, and they they didn't put a a true site plan in place at that time. And the previous building inspector requested that if they do anything else, they got to uh, submit a uh, site plan. This is the extent of the site plan. Rich, did I read somewhere in the in the submittal that um, that they said all the parking was going to be on pavement? Did someone write that in there or type that, or, or am I imagining that? I didn't notice it. No. I don't know if I could add. I just, I just started renting the property. So whoever went for the 35 car license, that wasn't me at all. So okay. if that's already approved, that no one told me of that. When I went to the town to get the license swapped, they they brought up something from like the early 80s that looked like it was written up on a napkin. So they told me I needed to do a minor site plan review. No one told me that it was ever increased to a 35 car license. So is the property approved for a 35 car license? That's a great question. If, if, because that's not, this, that's all news to me right now. And I've yeah. been coming in and out of here for yep. a, a little bit. So there was a transport company in there that made a mess and we've been, we, we moved in after they moved out and they're still on their way out and we're just trying oh, to Oh yeah, get, there's a lot of transport vehicles Still there. Yeah, yeah, still there, absolutely. Yeah, and they're working on getting them out. That has nothing to do with us. We just moved in in the meantime, and the landlord keeps telling me they're going to be out of there. So uh, 
if it's approved for a 35 car license, then I would like to just transfer that. But that's all news to me. So according to the memo from Mary, it was approved in 89 to bump it up to 35. So it should be 35 currently. Yeah, if I may, Mr. Chairman, yeah. so. Is it an active license or has it been? No, so, so um, if you don't mind, let me just read through this as uh, uh, Mr. McCarthy was, was mentioning. 1989, board selectmen increased the class two license from 15 to 35. The applicant is proposing 47. I checked with um, board of selectmen's office uh, this morning uh, to find out if there's any current um, auto repair permit or so um, on the property now that's active, if you will. And uh, there is no class two permit or application for 498 Main Street as of this time. The new folks would need to apply for a class two permit to sell used vehicles. And part of that process would be to obtain a business permit from the town. Um, under the class two licenses, uh, when they do go before the Board of Selectmen, there is a requirement. Um, the license goes with the, um, with the owner. Um, there's a, a quarry check and there's a series of other information that's required through the Board of Selectmen. Um, so according to, the, um, according to the Board of Selectmen's office this morning, there is no active permit at the site. So therefore, there would, and there is no mechanism to, to transfer that. Um, the, these stand alone um, based on the, applicant, the applicant's filing, if you will because it's going to require an individual check, right, of, of background and yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, criteria. Yeah. But the bottom line is, is the site, is the site acceptable for 35 cars, okay? Because when they, see, this is the, I think there's a disconnect between the Board of Selectmen and kind of the planning board. I would think the Board of Selectmen would require a uh, site plan showing the 35, you know, where the cars are going to be, you know, painted lines, okay? Now, according to the building inspector, yeah, he, he, he basically told the previous tenant, I guess back in 89, or, or had notes on 89 that none of that was done. All they did is go in there and lay some pavement on the ground. Uh, I'm concerned that all that pavement, all that runoff of any oils or whatnot is going into conservation land that abuts this property. You know, most times you'd, you'd expect if you're dealing with cars, oils, you know, thing, things that can happen, you'd want some sort of uh, stormwater management system that would contain the oil. So it wouldn't, wouldn't go into the wetlands. That that abut you. They basically abut you. Right. This this building. Okay. So I'm of the opinion that even what's down on the ground right now is not acceptable. It doesn't have any berms. It doesn't have any, uh, you know. You know, water catching system in the in the uh, the stormwater management of that that lot. So anything that's running off that pavement is going right to the conservation land. And uh, the reason I, I, would, I would propose that if we accept this submission, we have a public hearing because there's, there's abutters. One, one abutter is pretty close. I, I don't know. I don't, I don't, see, I don't see, see the trouble with this site plan that was given. There's no lot lines. I'm not sure where the lot lines are between your business, this business you're proposing, and that building, that that building next to it. So, I mean, uh, if you don't mind, through you, um, I saw the submission, and it's not you. Yep. Believe me, it's not you. When you came in with this, all due respect, someone in the planning board's office should have said, "You need more than this." Am I right? Because um, this is just, I mean, it's a sketch, and you come in and you. You draw some, and if I, if this parking space is to scale, there's no way you'll back out of that car, out of the spot. Which I car? Mean, which one? The one is on the right. I think they're customer parking. Yep. I don't know how you back out of spot number eight and right into the building. I mean, it. I think it needs to be have an engineered site plan. 
I mean, if we're going to make a we're real not determination anything. on it, and not your fault, but are you running a business now? I'm running a business in Charlton. Okay, so you're not running one there now? No. Oh, okay. Um, then I but think somebody's running something there, right? Because I remember about a year ago, somebody came before Tech Review, and they were going to buy this place, and they were going to add pavement to it. Whatever. Is that the people that are there now? Well, it might be this present owner. I know that there was a transport company there before us. We just moved in a Wait, couple. Did we ever approve a transport company? I, I, I don't. So I think the Mary told me that everything wasn't done properly on the property and that I'm just trying to go through the right source. I mean, the building inspector came and told me about something where police and the fire ch chief would come and he said I could skip that section of it. I forget what he referred to that as and come right to the planning board. So oh, that's good. This is where I am now. I'm not sure where that came from, but that's good. We got he came down to right the pro he came so down to the property and met with me. I forget what he referred to that meeting as. Tech meeting. Tech review. Tech review. Tech review. Yeah, he tech told review. me. So it sounds like you're basically starting from scratch. There okay. is no, there is no. So you need a brand new license. And well, just, just well, my opinion. If I could transfer the license, I would. There gladly do that, but he's, he made it sound like I, that's not possible. There isn't one to transfer, okay. according to the town planner and the records that the selectmen have. I mean, I really think you need to do some a site plan showing property lines, buildings, uh, accurate parking representation, and to address the conservation issue. Okay, so to do that, I just meet with the conservation man, man, the guy that's in charge of conservation, have him sign off on it, or? Uh, you have to have a plan first right. for them. They need to look at it. Should he meet with tech review, Tony? Um, if, if I may, the um, previous building commissioner, as, as going through the file here, waived technical review for, for whatever reason. Um, Certainly, we, we could certainly do a technical, rev technical review, um, but after discussion with uh, Patrick, our building inspector, and in reviewing the submittal here, definitely a detailed site plan would be warranted because um, mm -hmm. there's nothing I was specifically here. told that I didn't need an uh, engineer to draw up the plan. So, like, I'm just, I'm just trying to go through the steps as I'm told to go through them, right. and it seems like no one is on the same page. When you say previous building inspector, are you talking about the guy from 1989 or? No, I just met with him no, probably. No, I'm asking Tony. Um, that was uh, Commissioner Lancini, so who, who, just, who just left. The, um, you know, ultimately in, in, the, in the memo that was put together, certainly the board could vote to accept this submission without requiring a public hearing and approve the application using the site, the minor site plan review process. Um, condition upon final approval by all pertinent town boards and departments. One thing about that process too is that that is approval here and then go to the town boards, which is a little bit out of the tradition, I would say. But like Craig said, we don't have a plan. I mean, we got, got a sketch. Yeah. yeah. We need a plan that we can send out to all the town boards and they can give us their comments Right? I mean, I assume that would be the way to go. Just look at minor site plan. You, nothing's going to happen with stormwater management. Right. Unless someone like Conservation Commission says they don't have any drainage system that would trap gases or oils in cars. Okay? And I've, gone, I've, I've been involved in these things through the auto auction and the industrial zone. They, they had berm around them. They... they you, you, that stuff couldn't escape the site. All of all the vehicles had to be packed on pavement. Okay, and uh, I think some of the feeling here was, yeah, the town dropped the ball back in 1989, and I wasn't even on this board back in 1989, and they're trying to put up, you know, okay, we dropped the ball, okay. But why this, why this packing lot became bigger, and right now, someone has cleared the back of that, that lot by, by a good amount, good amount, all the way around the back, okay? 
Not only that, you've got unstabilized soil now. And the, the submitted plan shows the cars right in all that dirt. Yeah, honestly, as much as I want to empathize with the applicant, um, you know, if it wasn't for all this cleared land and it was the business was just going to yeah, be on the paved just area, the way, that, the, way it yeah, was. the way that Ronnie used it in the past. Um, now, maybe when was this clearing done? It looks like it was just done recently because this tree's still down in that, that drone shot. So that was what, beginning of June? Uh, this this was from April 2021. Um, the lot was paved sometime in either in 2019 or in 2020. Uh, repaved, I should say. Uh, and then they've just standing. made it bigger. But hard to, hard to discern um, exactly when the, the additional clearing took place before or after that hard to discern that well you see the picture there's trees still there yeah that cleared area no we do a minor site plan review i mean it's usually the person comes in he's taking what's existing he's not expanding anything you know this is not this is a whole new plan you're expanding cars it's unfortunate for him but um I mean, has conservation even gone and looked at this? Are they are they within the hundred foot buffer zone? Again, we're not. This is not your problem. No, I understand. It's just that, you know, you 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 don't have a permit from the selectmen. We don't have a site plan that we can improve. Um, this it's all the property is already being used for something that wasn't. We didn't approve that, right? We didn't approve this to have all these vehicles here. Well, it was a car. It was a car sales and repairs. But look at all these trucks. I mean, is that's yeah, not, no, that way that, that, that wasn't that, that wasn't it. Well, it's like, you know. But if you have a, uh, but if you have a yard sale and you don't have a permit, the police show up. <laughs> Am I right? Yeah. I, it's not your fault. Right, I understand that. But you're saying like I got to go to the select board of selectmen to get a permit. No, because no. Okay, you did the right thing coming to the planning board first. Because if I was on the board of selectmen, I wouldn't increase any more cars. I wouldn't even give you the thirty-five cars because you don't show where they're going, other than that sketch that's on there, and it, it, it's basically off the pavement. Okay, and you will have to go to the board of selectmen. Board of selectmen is to get your okay, authorization. So if I was to bring go to the board of cars. selectmen to propose. To reinstate a 35 car license would they do that you'd have to ask them you need a class 2 license which you're saying tony they don't have it this property not right correct correct right, so you have to go to the selectman and you have to submit a site plan for us so you got to do basically two things you got to get approval from the yeah. planning board on a site plan which shows you know the number of cars where they're going to park again i would suggest you come before the uh tech review because we'll have conservation there Fida, everybody will be there. We, we've had a we had a tech review on this a while ago, and it was for someone else was here. Okay, we did, and we approved it. We said, "Oh, this is great. They weren't going to change anything. They were going to improve the place." And then I rode by one time, and I saw all these trucks here. So I, I don't know who did what, but again, I would go to tech review. You meet with all the different departments. Once you work that out, then you can go to selectmen and say, "I need a class two license." And if you go to the selectman, you can say, I've already got a plan approved and all this other good stuff. So you got to go to tech yet. review, then the planning board, then the board of selectmen? Yes. Yeah. The tech review will, there'll be board of health. Everybody will be there that's going to get involved in this. So I need a plan to go to the tech yes. review. Yes. Well, you, you, you might want to come to us first, bring this and ask us what you have to do. I, I would just go to, right, Tony, we can go to tech review and just discuss. We do this all the time. You can discuss this at Tech Review. Right. Yes, but, but instead of submitting. But I, I would also, I'm, I'm happy to, um, but certainly ultimately you're still going to need you're still gonna to need have a, a plan. site plan, you know, where the landscaping is, where right. snow right. removal is, a site parking problem. But there's no lines. sense in doing that until you meet with everybody and they tell you, right? Conservation will tell you if you're within the 100 foot uh, buffer zone. Then you can go back, take what typically what happens is we sit down with an applicant. Sometimes they'll have a general plan, but they don't put all the detail on it. Yeah, they okay. sit down with the tech review board and they say, this is what we want to do with this property. Okay. And then Tony will be there and say, well, this is what you need to do. The building inspector will be there. He'll tell you what you need to do. Conservation will look at it and say, well, um, you know, you're within a hundred foot buffer. Now you've got to file with the, with the DEP and all that stuff. Then you can go back and do a final. Then you can decide if you still want to do the project. 
Okay, we've scared people away before, unfortunately. It sounds like it was already approved for this property, is what you made it sound like. The we tech never, review? We, we never approved this. No, you said you went tech, through a tech review. Tech review just gets yeah. all the departments together so you know what you're is fighting. Is there a record of that tech review? Yeah, we have it. So we it's have, just, we it's, have minutes. It's just discussion. It doesn't mean anything. Yeah. It's just people telling you what you, they think you should do. But And I, I know what Norman said, but my honest opinion is if you go to tech review and you don't have anything to review, you know what I mean? Yeah. You really should have a plan that shows the wetland, actual wetland buffer, wetland line on it the buildings, the pavement, the property lines, then you can really discuss it. Well, that, that's a double-edged sword because we're making you go out. I mean, I've been on tech review for, what, five years, and we do have a lot of these discussions, Craig, without people come in and say, this is what we need to do, and we tell you what you need to put on a plan. It's two ways of looking at it, but because yep. you're going to go do a plan, and they're going to say, well, well, I also don't want to do a plan if there's something that's preventing it from happening, no matter what the plan says. Yeah, that's why you come in with the tech plan's review. plan's not free, you know. You come in to tech review and you tell us what you want to do, and they'll tell you. Hmm. It would be helpful if you had a basic plan, but it's not. A lot of people come in and they just, they just tell us, this is what we want to do with the property. I mean, Ken sits there, he'll tell you, he goes to these meetings, you'll get input from the fire department. They're going to tell you all the stuff that you have to do. We just had one, somebody wanted to rehab a piece of property over on Pine Street, and they just came in and they said, this is what we want to do, and we said, this is what you have to do, and we haven't heard from them. So it, it, either, you're going to spend money to do a plan, and then we're going to look at that plan and say, right, these are all the changes you got to make. Right. So, but that's whether you put a plan in or not. You can still go to tech review. Yeah. And if I may, Mr. Miss, we do meet uh, regularly, so we could schedule for next Tuesday. Okay. You know, and get... Some of the folks in. Yeah, this is a good place to start. You can bring this in, okay, if yeah. you want. Conservation will be there. I mean, I'm concerned about stormwater management, okay, on the on the uh, impervious asphalt surface you've got there. Okay, and right now all it does is run off into the dirt, and you just cleared and created more dirt, okay. It's just getting close. I'd... I'd like to see conservation, see what they say, okay? If they say you don't need to do anything with stormwater management, we're okay? Okay. That's one less thing you got to do. They're probably going to go out and do a site visit. Once you meet with us, they'll probably go take a look at it, see see what it is. Okay. You know? Sounds good. So uh, really does. Tech review or good? Yeah, I, absolutely. And I have your phone number as well, so I'll give you a call tomorrow. Okay. okay. Sounds good. Thank you. It may, right. Just make sure we get this information. That, like Rich said, that's a good starting. Okay, so. So what are we gonna do? We're gonna with, we're not gonna accept this because it's an incomplete plan. We don't have a good uh, site plan. Can he just officially withdraw his application? Well, he can't withdraw. He's not the applicant. Oh. The applicant was the owner of the property. Oh. Well, he is the applicant, I guess. So, so if I may, Mr. Chairman, um, so, so the application, if the board deems it to be incomplete, yeah. um, there is nothing about withdrawing without prejudice. It would be a situation if we were to yeah. have it advertised. We, and haven't so even, on. we haven't even accepted so, it to um, start the process. That's so. what we would need that plan you're requesting. Yeah. That's part of the application is what we need. Yeah, I'm, we I'm don't have a plan, so it's I'm incomplete. I'm concerned about stormwater management. Right. That's my big thing. And if they're going to use all that area that they just cleared, well, they don't have any pavement under that, and that just increases the amount of pavement. Okay, so it's 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 need some need some answers. So I hope you can get together with conservation, let them find out if they've got any issues with this. I'm sure. And with and with the other departments and tech departments, you're going to want uh, the board of health there because they're going to be exactly. concerned about any any drainage or any oil spills and stuff. So. This one's incomplete. We're not going to accept this one. Okay, the next one is uh, dated 7-21-21. It's a application for under Chapter 5, Table 2, Uses in the Commercial District. The applicant is uh, Nicholas Corain, Cochran. Cochran. Corain. Uh, Interested in doing a bed and uh, a bed and breakfast 
this property, the old Viglia uh, building there with the uh, carriage house in the back. is uh, 275 Main Street, map 33C, Paso D07. Business in Everything looks good. And if I may, Mr. Yeah. Chairman, this, yeah. this applicant met with us last, last Tuesday. Last Tuesday, um, during during tech review, and um, originally was proposing just for two apartments at the carriage house. Since um, since the technical review, the gentleman has always expressed an interest in doing some type of bed and breakfast. Um, so since then, um, he asked if he could apply for the the country in. Um, in the village business district. So essentially it'll be two. He, there is a narrative in there provided as well um, as they prepare, um, but it's uh, basically two, two units, if you will. Um, there is parking um, as well to, uh, to accommodate. The main house um, is owner occupied. We did, uh, during, during that tech review process, also check with Board of Health on septic and it seemed as though everything to be in good order. Um, there's two separate um, septic um, systems. The lot, you may recall, was divided uh, through an A&R not too long ago. And uh, at that time, I want to say maybe it was even in April, um, but sometime in the spring, there was a, whenever you're in a situation where a lot's divided as such, where the rare lot's divided, still want to ensure that there's access to particular access to, to the building and ideally that there's parking somewhere memorialized. There is, and my apologies if it's not in the packet, but you- No, it is, I saw okay. it in there. That's why I knew it was the Viglia place. There is an easement. Um, there was an easement and- For passage and for parking, for shared yep. parking. Yep. Um, now, of course, that is all under the same ownership now, if you will, um, but I, I just wanted to, to make a note of that. Okay. Uh, Tony, quick question. Mm -hmm. um, how many spots are you allotting for the existing structure and how many spots are you allotting for the two the apart the two bed and breakfasts in the back? Sure, sure. So the existing structure, the, the main house, if you will, is uh, two parking spaces. Okay. And then the country inn, I'm going off the top of my head, but I want to say it's one one point five. Um, I believe we have a ratio for that for the country inns in town. 1.5 per bedroom? Per bedroom, I believe. Okay, so I don't think you make it, right? So there's eight spaces, um, although it's not. There are eight spaces on this plan? There should be eight spaces on the plan. Am I in error? All right, I'm not, I see one, two, three, four. This did come up in tech review, so I, I do, I don't and, have and I do appreciate the. They don't have that plan. That's why I haven't got it yet. You are correct. Um, there's eight spaces um, shown on the plan. I'm sorry, four spaces. There is um, a total of eight, though, on site uh, with wheel stops as well. Where are those? Um, adjacent to the um, adjacent to the four. Okay, so they just continue four more. Correct. Correct. Okay. The uh, and, that, and that meets the requirement, the town requirement. Yes, uh, with the exception, though, if there's any changes on the main building. So if they decide to expand this, then we would, I'm not sure how many units they could put in the existing structure. Um, that is owner occupied right now, and that's the intention right now. Um, but in the future, let's say, if they were, then there could be a trigger relative to that parking. Okay. The existing garage they would keep, um, and um, which currently is, is, serves as two spaces. So Tony, well, well, we he, what he wants to do, he needs five, right? If he has a two-bedroom bed and breakfast, one and a half for each bedroom, that's three. Yes, he would need five. Although I, I do want to, just for me, if I may, just to confirm the parking scenario numbers. The other thing we need to be aware of too, we approve the bylaw where they can 
whatever frontage they got on Main Street can be counted for parking. A lot, you know what? What? There's plenty of room on that lot for parking. Well, I know that, but I'm just saying he's talking about expanding it. So if they say he needed 10 spaces, he might have two spaces on Main Street. That was the whole purpose of that bylaw. To and allow there's plenty of room in the back to put more parking. Yeah, I agree with that. All right. But what I'm saying is he was talking about expanding it. Okay. They wanted to have more bedrooms, more things with the main house. Yep. He's got instead of if he's got eight and he only needs five, then he's got three more on the lot. But if he needed more for expansion, he can use it on the street. That okay. was my point. And, and so through you, Mr. Chairman, I, I do stand corrected. Um, actually, the ratio is a little bit better, I guess. Um, for hotels, motels, country inns, it's one parking space per room plus one space per four patrons for restaurants, lounges, and meeting rooms. So, um, so to follow up on what Craig so can you ask him to put the other four spaces on the plan? Yes. Just, yes. Right? Go to eight. Did you say eight. room or bedroom? It just says per room. Okay, so how many rooms are in that back building? How many rooms it are should, in the I, I know exactly what you're saying. It should read per bedroom? Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Per should bedroom. it? Maybe the bylaw is meant to be per room. I don't know. I didn't do it. Right, right. Before my time as well. Yeah. When I typically look at these, um, and certainly I <laughs> defer to the, the building commissioner, Traditionally, when we say room, it is implied bed. It's not. It would. It would read bedroom. Mm -hmm. But here, a little little read of it is. It just says room. Hotel room. Mm. Okay, so each unit could only hold one guest. One parking space. But then he's saying I, up to six. Isn't that what I saw? <laughs> a hotel room. So that would could be, be different than a bed and breakfast. Bed and breakfast has a kitchen, right? A hotel room doesn't have a kitchen. Some do. Well. Now, and I'm certainly with a question like this, I, I would get um, interpretation from from the building commissioner as relates to parking here, just for for clarity. They just put the four other spaces on and show to eight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, can they update this to show yeah. exactly? Absolutely. What they, they they're going to do. Absolutely. Okay. Because you got two, you got two spaces in the garage. Two car garage means two cars go with you. Okay, so the, technically they got six. They got four outside and two in the garage. Okay, so it gives them ten if they add these up. Yeah, four. yeah. And then he's covered forever for anything he does over there. And you said the same guy owns both lots. Yes. So, so yes. right now it's going to be owner occupied. So he's going to get the garage spaces, I'm sure. So if he decides to break off that bed and breakfast and sell it, he'll need to put an easement around those parking spaces. So, so there is currently an easement in place right now um, that also allows for shared parking. Where is that easement? The, um, the actual language itself, I believe, was included in the packet. I think we did this about six months ago. Um, yeah, we, we did here. that. Well, we an we easement did. down the middle. With the, down the middle and with the park that showed the parking, right? With, yes, with shared parking. Shared parking. There's a deed in there. Look at the deed, Craig. Yeah, I should have received a the deed. shows uh, the right to pass and repass for the person that owned the back lot and also was given those, those, those four parking yeah. spaces, uh, basically. They were going to separate it. So are you sure, Rich? That I, I understand the pass and repass along the 25-foot wide access, but it specifically says also including access to parking spots? Yes. Oh, it does? Yes. Okay. And we're good. Yeah. And Originally, then, she was going to separate the, pot, the project. That's why we we approved this. I think it was like six months ago or a year ago. It was more than that. She it, came before us. She was going to separate the property. She, yeah. We talked about the park and we talked about the easement. Did they give the terms of the right of way here? Because it's, here it is. I think there was a shared before uh, that maintenance agreement too. Yeah, it? it's a right of way and shared parking agreement. Yeah. And so if I may, Mr. Chairman, certainly, because I remember as soon as we went for that business in the back to have some rights to shared parking there. So, uh, yeah, she was, running, she was running a business in the front house, and mm -hmm. this person was living in the back house. So. I wouldn't be surprised if the attorney prepared it you know, herself. Yeah. And, yeah, and, yeah, and there was yeah. some language in there with respect to signage and so on. Now, we may wish to, uh, after further review uh, through the process, 
condition for the conditions in there like take to the easement itself but if we want to condition the approval down the road for the it just shows the eight spaces and like two in the garage we got ten Maybe you should double check that instead of rooms, it's in bedrooms. Could have been a misprint. I, I, I appreciate the inquiry. Those things that are important to Craig because he's the one to pick up. There'll be more, uh, hopefully, there'll be more more of these to come. <laughs> oh, no, this is actually a good. No, thing. Well, this is the first one. Yeah, yeah, guinea pig. Like this, it's a little complex because it's two different buildings. So are we going to need a special public hearing for this? Yeah, probably, right? Yeah, it's a special permit. It's not just site review. Will we accept this? It's granting a special permit, okay? Yeah, along with the uh, site plan right behind it. So we got to have it for these special permits. Entertain a motion to accept the submission and to schedule a public hearing. Four. So we would um, suggest that it would be for the second meeting in August. Okay. I, I would make that motion, Rich, with the understanding that they add those other four spaces on the plan. Show eight parking spaces instead of four. No. Yeah. Right. Well, whatever the interpretation turns out to be. Right. They've got enough room there to extend, extend that four more spaces with the pavement that's there. So all they got to do is stripe four more pocket spaces. So I'll make that motion that we accept the plan with the condition that they show the other four parking spaces on the plan. So, based on the fact that we do have an easement, which is we have anything the right else on the park. on the twenty third of August schedule. Okay, entertain a motion to uh, again accept the submission along with the whatever norm said and to schedule a public hearing for 705 on August 23rd, 2021. That's my motion. Okay, seconded by Roger. Further discussion? There being none, all those voting in favor? Aye. 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 Carried you. By voting members tonight. So. And the time being 8.45, or exceeded the uh, 7.30 extension, we still don't have enough members to uh, consider the uh, special permit for, for Pioneer Drive. So we're going to have to reschedule that for the next meeting, which is uh, August ninth at is there anything on august 9th on, on august 9th we have um the founders court project scheduled um i believe that that would be at 705 so 715 715 make a motion to continue the uh public hearing on four pioneer drive to august 9th at 715 p.m is that a motion roger made the motion is there a second Second. Seconded by Craig. Further discussion? There being none. All those voting in favor? Aye. 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 Carried by members present. This is the summit doldrums. We get these once in a while. You're welcome. All right, Tony, what you got? So for th for this evening, I'd just like to um, just two two things. Um, one is we did receive a communication from CMRPC uh, regarding local planning assistance and um, local planning assistance hours. Um, just thought it was a nice memo with respect to. Um, the uh, LPA and what it can be used for and how those hours are acquired and so on. Um, just for informational purposes, I certainly found it helpful uh, being uh, new to the CMRPC uh, and how LPAs are done here. So I just thought I'd share that. Okay. The um, second uh, piece is 
Um, I have nothing to, to present tonight, um, but just to share with the board, um, we are, although the, although it hasn't opened yet, but we are in the process of uh, looking ahead for the October town meeting. Um, is right around the, uh, the corner. And um, folks may recall at the, the last, um, last time we, we had a, a, did a presentation, we talked about different uh, zoning um, possible amendments, and uh, one of them was, was the site plan review under Dover amendment for, for places of worship and so on. And it was a question that, that came up that required further review. Um, in conversation with uh, our new building commissioner, we would also like to, to look at the site plan review process and uh, requirements, what is a submittal, um, and to, to try to really streamline and, and clean up that process, if you will, um, adopt, uh, adopt some, some language um, in there with respect to what exactly requires a public, just clarifications of it. What I'm getting at is it would take a little bit more work um, than, than this fall. So, um, so we'd anticipate something for, uh, for, the next, for the next spring on that. For this fall, um, perhaps, and, and again, no, I have no hard, hard feelings on this, but, but a thought of if there's an appetite to look at um, expanding the marijuana overlay district um, looking at the, the boundaries and seeing if there's opportunity, if there's an appetite for it. I figure I'd you know, throw that out there for, for conversation. If there is at least a general inquiry uh, or, or just a general interest, I'd be happy to prepare something in detail for the next meeting um, to share with you. Um, what we're looking at, uh, just to throw out there, maybe squaring off some of those parcels around Pioneer Drive, maybe there's opportunity to expand to across the, the street on 20 or look at other parts of, of the town um, as well. Just, just some food for thought. Um, the second one too, um, just to look into, there was a note in the, in the master plan about expanding the um, industrial district across from IPG. Across from IPG, it's currently LI, but then behind there, there's a res zoned residential. And uh, just curious if there's any appetite as well. Um, I'm just throwing these out there. Uh, nothing is in hard stone to say that the board must consider or not. Um, but uh, if it's something that the board's interested or anything else that the board's interested in, uh, be happy to, to, to get some information. And at the next meeting, we have Founders Court and happy to, to talk a little bit more and share with you um, some some proposals in terms of what a, an overlay adjustment could look like well, why don't or you, whatnot. Why don't you, at the next meeting, Tony, present something on, you know, expanding that uh, industrial district uh, mm -hmm. across from IPG, showing, uh, showing us what lots there are there now. Sure. Uh, you know. Sure. And, and, and I, I, will, um, I will do some work, too, on kind of go through the, 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 the title um, as well for those properties. But I, I, I know I know what a lot of that there was a massive lot of land back there that uh, there was an older gentleman wanted to keep the keep trees. it yeah non developed so if it won't do us any good to do it that's that's right that's if, another thing you know? if it's a non starter it's a non starter yeah Which, um, you know, yeah I can tell you on the master plan you're right we did discuss that and at the time we didn't want to rezone it because. There's still about 40 acres across from IPG that's industrial that's not developed. So we felt at that time there was really, plus what you said, there was some little bit of an opposition about. So we just said, well, once that 40 acres gets developed, the town might I want mean, to look at it. But mm -hmm. the guy owns that land. You know, if he doesn't want to have it developed for anything, it isn't going to get developed. Who cares right. where the lot lines are and who cares what it's zoned for? I mean, from a, right. from a yeah. practical point of view. Uh, maybe we could look at that 40 acre piece and see how far back that goes and run a line that goes right along the road so something can get behind the two businesses that are there now uh, to increase industrial parcels, okay? The other issue is, of course, is uh, sewerage in that. At least there's sewerage in that road now. So 
and that may entice somebody to do that. So, see Were what you we approached got. by the owner to do this? Is, is there, no, 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 not at all. Um, and that's a fair, a, a fair question. And uh, and same with the other one too. I was not approached by anyone. It's just me being a planner sitting in the office and saying, <laughs> saying what's next. Oh, sometimes um, people do come in and say, you know, I'd like to get my land. I want to sell it. And that, that's fine. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. Like Rich yeah. said, I, I know that that gentleman was quite adamant about, adamant saying, about the pine it. Trees. No one was going to develop his pine trees, okay? It was going to become a pine, be pine grove for a long time. So. <laughs> Yeah, no, no, uh, no hard feelings. Uh, yeah. um, well, you're and, doing your job. I mean, just, sometimes we have a little bit of history. That... And then um, on on the other one too, if if um, I'm happy just to put this together, if you folks want to look at, or if it's um, there's potential. I mean, I mean, there could be potential there, but I'm not advocating you know, you either talked way. About a, you talked about a lab that processes marijuana testing. Is that have to be defined as a marijuana district or are they doing a service to the marijuana facilities they have no product to sell all they're doing is testing it's like sending your blood out somewhere and having that tested you know what i mean does it need to be a marijuana zone district to do that yes where are they drawing the lines on this thing i can right. understand manufacturing and i can of marijuana itself and dispensing Okay, but you go beyond that. I know, I know there was a place in, in Framingham that was testing marijuana. Okay, and they got in trouble because they, they were throwing stuff away improperly. Okay, but was that, in a, was that an existing lab that just did this as a service for them? And uh, I don't know. I, I just throw it out there because I'm, I'm confused. Yes, no. There's going to be it, a lot of there's going to be a lot of spider webbing going on dealing with uh, marijuana yeah. dispensers, dispensaries, and manufacturing facilities. Yeah. Uh, so uh, earlier I did receive, and now the lab is long gone. So uh, they they went to another community, um, but particularly on the lab, their their primary work is is in this industry, and they want it to be within the the di they want to be near the you know. Other businesses, and but so as on. far as the Cannabis Control Commission, it, it has to be. They would still have marijuana. It's in, well, it, this, you know. I'm, I'm just. I'm just. Yeah. Where are they going to draw the line? I right. Guess, right. You know? Right. Right. I throw that out there because I don't know. I know a lot of friends could be in trouble because they test marijuana all the time. Hey, you. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> all right. That it, Tony. Uh, just uh, would you folks like a presentation at the next meeting on that or sure i mean it's not sure. binding <laughs> sure. if you want to if you dig into the what the cannabis cannabis control commission deems as needing special districts like that because i wouldn't think a, a testing facility number one why does that have to be zoned for marijuana use okay I just leave yeah, that up to you. Maybe I think you he's asking, answers. oh, do you want to do a plan on increasing the district? Well, uh, I don't mind seeing what you've got in mind. Sure, sure. But and the bank building out here is a long ways from the one that's over down across from uh, the old yeah. gas station down there. And, and this, again... Uh, we me, tightened it up because we didn't want anything else there. As a yeah. matter of fact, the planning board wouldn't have put it there if we had our say, but it was done through the Board of Selectmen at the time and... Yeah, I think it's they, interesting. Don't get to me look wrong; they made a great building out of a an eyesore, okay? And it's a thriving business for Oxford right now, okay? I, I appreciate that. I see what's happening, okay? But on the other hand, I don't think we want micro dots throughout the town just because there's a vacant building here or whatever. And I, you know, and I had sure. problems with the someone discussing. Placing one on Sutton Avenue. We had a lot of discussion we about had this. A lot, of discussion. a lot of people were concerned. They didn't want it in the neighborhood. I mean, so we've been through all of this, and this is why we picked North Oxford. We thought it was on a major highway, so it would be good to put one there. Away but, from schools. You right, know, schools, churches. There were no residences up in that. Or very, I think 
I don't think there were anybody. No, there. there's nothing. So there. it, it, it eliminated In fact, a like lot I of said, issues. the old Chinese restaurant parcel is still available. Over right, there. right. So they oh. they haven't run out of space. In fact, they got more space over there than they had in in our, in, the, in that gas station. And they used the whole thing. And think of this: we only allow two, right? Was our limit two? Yeah. Facilities. So we can put one more in town. Yeah, I don't mind changing it if we want to. If we think a third is needed, mm -hmm. it, no it's, one's proposing it. It's well, our overlay district allows for more. Mm -hmm. Just the two. Yeah, yeah. It's it's. I'm you know I'm reminded of um, recently in Webster the um, the new facilities down um, as we cross the the town Edward line, Road, yeah. and then it has me thinking about well, Webster ent ent entered into those community agreement. But I'd be curious to, to to see the traffic and the trucking and so on would cut through Oxford to, to make its way, perhaps. Um, and has, has me thinking about, well, there's some industrial down there, too. Would there potentially be, be an appetite? I mean, um, in fairness, I think the fact that this one's been going on for so long and there haven't been any issues, maybe people are thinking differently about them. You know what I'm saying? They're not... Maybe is that... I don't know, adverse to them. And the other thing is, too, like Rich pointed out, they got in because we didn't have a zoning. Correct. Yeah. And at the time, if you didn't have a zoning, go anywhere. And that's why we, you know, we got, we got a, a, another zone. We decided zone, that, yeah, that we needed was not to do a real quick. appropriate place for it, but, you know, we had to live with it. And that's why we went to North Oxford. Could have easily put one in South Oxford if there was some vacant land that something could go in. But there really isn't down in our industrial districts down there. But. You could put them in another industrial, whatever. <laughs> so uh, that's, I just wanted to share that. And, and also too, if you, know, if, if you folks think uh, even you know, during the week or so, if you know, something, gee, maybe we you know, should look into this, I'm happy to, to, to do some research and so on. I got one for you. North Ox at Route 20. If you're heading east, you take 56 and you're heading east on the right-hand side there's a little area that I think is zone residential. Yes. And you thought about changing that or talking to the people that own the property there? If they, if they, years ago, somebody, one of the owners asked me about it and they never followed up, so I didn't do anything. Yeah, I, I'm, I mean, I'm happy to follow up. And, and again, part of this process, and by no means anyone that's watching this, uh, it's it w would reach out to any of the property owners. Yeah, I would talk to them changes, first and say if they're interested. Would, Some, yeah. At yeah, one time I, they were. I don't know if they are. I, I do recall at the last time, too, we talked about the, uh, the, the adult use, right, and the proximity that residential was to, to former uh, adult use site. Um, it's interesting, right, because the GB is new up there along that, that corridor, so perhaps there was some merit in looking at that. You might want to reach out to them see if they want. Yeah. Because there used to be a silver mine up there, I found out. They used to mine silver out of there in the late 1800s. Did you know that? Mm-mm. -hmm. You know that you might have. Yeah, I saw it. You might have a silver mine underneath your house. Right? I don't think it goes underneath. No, my it house. no it's far. it's closer to the Auburn side, yeah. really. <coughs> so <Anyway>. that's all. <laughs> okay, that's all. I make a motion. We adjourn. Okay, is there a second? Okay. Second by Roger. Okay, all those voting in favor. Aye. 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 Aye.